You're listening to The Dope Experience with Rami Bryant, Javier Collins, and Sal Vergara. Our conversations revolve around people looking to evolve and transform into the next phase of their lives. We're here to help them navigate this journey by developing one's perspective every day. Gentlemen, good afternoon. We are finally here, live and kicking. After all these uh, months of discussing it, it is nice to see all of our work come to fruition. Yes, it became a reality. Good to see you guys. Reality indeed. A lot. We have a lot to cover. We have a lot. A lot's going on in the world. Uh, Man, first we were hit. The world was shocked with COVID. And then a lot of people in the world were shocked. Not everybody, but a lot of people in the world were shocked what came after COVID. Um, and that we're seeing play out now. So, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. This is a long time coming. A lot of work and research and our efforts, man. And, man, I'm just happy to be here with y'all. How you doing, Rambi? I'm doing good. Yeah, it has been a lot of work and research. You know, you and I, we went to SMU, and that's pretty much where we kind of came up with this idea. Went got our master's, became executive coaches, and – you know, that's how we came up with this whole idea of wanting to give people a different perspective on things. Well, that's we a good, our good friend, Sal. I'll go ahead. No, that's a good point because a different perspective is exactly what is needed because the world is different. The world is no longer yeah. the world we knew <laughs> and the world to come is not the world we know now. So a different perspective. Um, yeah, Sal, why don't you go ahead and break down the title? Well, the dope experience, and you know, we collectively wanted to be part of this show uh, as an extension of what our conversations are when we're together. Um, we all bring very diverse backgrounds. I'm the only non-athlete on the show, and we've got different backgrounds. We've got different experiences in life that we can bring to the table, um, and it's clear that we subscribe to the same basic tenets of life. I think we uh, we respect ourselves. Uh, we respect others. We respect our faith. We love our family and our friends, and we've got a genuine desire to help people. And I, I think that's the essence of our friendship and the spirit of the show. And uh, thank you for inviting me to contribute to expanding and conveying those perspectives. And dope, it's a, it's a, a slang vernacular that all of us use at some point. Um, and uh, Bromby and, and Javier and I came up with something that I think really embodies that idea of conveying in articulating those different perspectives, developing one's perspective every day. And uh, that's something that we aspire to uh, in our daily lives. And it not necessarily be business, but just life in general. And um, I think this is a, an amalgamation uh, of different ideas that we all come up with uh, to be able to share those ideas and, and impress upon people some of the things that we think about and how to approach those things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. and. Uh... You know, I had football to that kind of helped me because you know I was a bit sheltered. I, you know, I didn't leave Oklahoma, and Oklahoma is a little backwards when it comes to certain things. And I only saw things, you know, with the lifestyle I grew up. I mean, they can I can kind of get into my story on that. You know, I grew up. I was born in Oklahoma City. My mom was a drug user. My daddy was a, a dope dealer funny dope dealer <laughs> and and they didn't raise me i was raised by my aunt and uncle and my grandparents kind of just took care of me financially but uh early on i took an ace assessment and the ace assessment is what they call it adverse childhood experience and if you score four or higher you consider a high risk i scored an eight so if you went by the numbers and statistics, I'm not supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to make it to football or make it to college, play professional football, because they said people that score four or higher are less likely to graduate high school or more likely to be a felon and uh, have several health issues. And I don't have any of those. I'm not a felony. I mean, I'm not a felon. I, obviously, I graduated high school. I have my master's. And... I went on to play pro- professional football. But the thing about that, football was my identity. So when I transitioned from football, it was tough. So just imagine any profession you've done 20 years or longer, 
And we started playing football. I don't know about Javier, you, you, Javier, but I started playing football when I was in the third grade. And I was good. So I identified with football and with the lifestyle that I live, that was my way of getting recognition and dealing with the pain, right? Football kept me out of trouble and kept me in school to where I wouldn't be in the streets doing what I wasn't supposed to do. But it also opened up my eyes to different things. Like I lived in, I lived in four different states here. I lived in three different cities in Canada and I lived in Germany. So I got to see a lot of different things, been a lot of around a lot of different demographics and seen several play with several different type of players to where I was exposed to a lot more than the average person. And that kind of changed my perspective on things. Like I mentioned earlier, I, if I would stay in Oklahoma and didn't, didn't do anything, I guarantee I would just be in this. I would have been in trouble. I would have ended up like my father and I ended up a statistic. But uh, transitioning to the real world was the hardest thing I had to do. And I wasn't prepared. And that's what kind of, that's where this show kind of came around is the help. How can Javier, people like me, Javier and you, Sal, help players or help anybody transition from one job to another or just any type of transition in life? and give them a different perspective to that when it comes to corporate America. So that's a bit of my story. And uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. This, uh, as you mentioned, this, uh, this experience, this, uh, this time that we spend with each other con conversating is uh, underlined by that transition. And it, 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 it's not always defined as uh, a typical work transition, transition, or a role transition in life, but it's all it's also uh, embodies um, uh, more of an evolution, right? Uh, bringing oneself from one state in, into another, right? Dope is uh, developing one's perspective every day. So uh, you and I, Rambi, we've we've uh, connected on a number of times. Sal, you and I have connected on a number of times. All of us have connected on that uh, a shared a shared goal or a shared vision on that mission and that mission of development and what that takes. So, so yeah, everything, all things transitionary uh, in these conversations. So for me, man, I'm originally uh, was raised in uh, Twin Cities, uh, rep and power George Floyd. I grew up on the same pot on the St. Paul side of things, um, where my mother was from. I wasn't born in St. Paul. I was born in uh, San Francisco, California, but uh, I was definitely raised in St. Paul in the north. Um, and yeah, just growing up in a in a single parent household, uh, my mom, you know, raising two two boys, myself and my older brother. Uh, it's, it's hard living. It's it's, uh, it's very it's not easy. Um, a lot of challenges. Um, and early in my life, I I gravitated and and clung to sports. Uh, I I um, uh, determined or decided or even discovered at a very young age that I had like you, Rambi, I had some athletic talent. You know, you could see it early. You really couldn't speak to it, but you knew it was there. And, you know, thankfully, uh, I was able to to see that talent. And thankfully, I was able to realize that. And thankfully, I had the, the grace bestowed upon me of having people early in my life that could help feed that and nurture that and get myself in situations to where that could grow. So a transition has really been my life story uh, through sports, um, spending all of my early childhood development playing sports, being in that team, that team dynamic, uh, being in a competitive environment, um, middle school, high school, college, and eventually I was uh, I was thankful enough to to continue my my sports experience uh, professionally, um, which was a very uh, eye-opening and enriching experience. So, but yeah, that, you know, that lended itself to 
you know, a lot of the perspectives and a lot of the things that we're going to talk about through this platform and a lot of the things that even help to bring this this platform to fruition. So as you alluded to, Rondi, once the once the sport is over, it's uh, it's, it's a whole it's a whole different formula. Right. It's, it's almost like uh, starting back at square one and having to figure everything out uh, without any instructions, without any instruction manual. And um, so a lot of people, a lot of uh, men and women facing that situation uh, have have experienced the challenges and difficulties with doing that. But, you know, there is a way there is a way. And, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of that. So currently, man, go figure. I am a marketing uh, professional, marketing and branding professional. So um, I am now uh, trained to help others uh, impact their own story and leverage that story in, in uh, discovering and displaying how they want to show up in the world. So I'm super excited to, to get this show on the road. I'm glad we're finally here. As we spoke earlier, a lot of work and effort has gone into this and, and it's finally here. So, uh, so tell, why don't you uh, round us off and, and, and tell our, our good listeners about yourself? Sure. First off, I'm, uh, uh, I've never admitted this to you guys uh, in public or even in private, but uh, about just a year ago when we met through a, a, a mutual colleague, um, I geeked out. I, mean, I told my wife, I'm like, who would have thought in a year that I'm hanging out with two professional uh, athletes? And that just never, yeah. never entered my mind that I would ever get to this point of uh, being friends with, with you guys. Um, and so I'm geeked out on, inside. <laughs> you, you guys don't see it very often, but uh, speaking you, of- You hold it well. I appreciate that. Um, speaking of different perspectives, uh, my parents are immigrants from the Philippines. So I'm Filipino and I'm Asian. And so this whole idea that you guys brought up of, of developing one's perspective every day really resonated with me. And after the birth of my sister uh, in Seattle, where my dad was um, uh, was helping design the 747 and 737s with Boeing, that's how they came over to the States. Uh, they moved to L.A. and eventually they moved to Pasigula, Mississippi, where I was actually born. I was born here in the South. Um and he helped uh, develop and design uh, amphibious warships for the Navy. And so uh, I wasn't even a year old. They moved to Houston uh, and I've lived here in Texas for the past 47 years. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm a proud uh, Texas Aggie graduate of 1994. Uh, I'm a husband. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a brother to a wonderful sister. I'm a funkle, a fun uncle <laughs> to, to my <laughs> Um, I'm a daddy to fur babies. Uh, I'm a godfather to great kids and uh, a loyal friend. And so prior to this current career that I have now, I, I was actually a mortgage banker for 14 years. And then I took the proverbial leap of faith. I think I told you guys this uh, when we first met in 2008, when the mortgage industry imploded, um, I was managing the state of California for my last mortgage company. I took a leap of faith into the HR recruiting and talent acquisition space. Um, 12 years later, I'm doing what I'm doing now, working for uh, a national uh, HR consulting firm. And this is really kind of the, the evolution of not only my life and my career, but it's brought me to meeting you guys. Um, and now I'm podcasting with you guys. So we actually met, like I alluded to, through a mutual colleague, um, I guess a year ago. And we've developed a really strong friendship. Um, you know, it's predicated, I think, on the common desire to help those who seek guidance and support. I think when I first met you guys, you proactively, I didn't even ask the question, but you guys proactively said, we want to just help people. It's not about the money. It's not about uh, recognition. You genuinely want to help people. And in my role here and my company, that's, I genuinely philanthropically want, want to uh, um, inspire people and help them in, in many different ways, uh, not only from a business perspective, but also in life. And so this is, like you said, Javier, a great platform to do that. Um, each of each of us have different perspectives and different backgrounds. I think that we can combine. We're not always going to obviously agree, but I think that's the great and beautiful thing when we talked about it. That the concept of the show is to provide those different um, perspectives and, and have people kind of think about, raise questions, and and um, kind of question on their own what their their perspectives are. So 
I'm happy to be here. Uh, certainly, we've got a lot of, as we've talked about, great plans for future guests and great topics. Um, so it's inspirational to me, and uh, I appreciate being part of this uh, this team. No doubt, yeah, Sal. Just real quick before we continue, did you say fur babies? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you too. Can you can you put that down for us? That's another way. It's, a, it's another way of saying pets. But yes, sir, I said fur babies. Okay. Okay. What kind of pets do you have? We actually have uh, a cat. His name is Dude Cat. His actually, uh, actually on his tag it says Dude Cat. And we have three dogs. They're all Chihuahuas. I'm a small dog guy. I like to carry them around with me. No uh, doubt. Oh, yeah. Wow. Her names are Aggie, uh, Brittany Ears, and then Christina Waguilera. Those are oh, so dogs. Aggie. Aggie. Uh... Where did that in, come from? I don't know. Maybe the school that I went to. Hey, what school was that? Oh, um, there's a school. There we go. School. I was just waiting. I was just waiting for that. Ooh. Here we what go. What school was that? Huh? I mean, Texas A&M University in College Station, home of the Texas Aggies. Fighting Texas Aggie class in 1994. Oh, okay. Work it down for it. You got to write, write that down. Do, do they have a football team? I think so. I think so. Oh. They, Good one these days. Oh, okay. Some of the players <laughs> like to do this, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> years ago, but, uh, yeah. Texas so A&M stand up, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, you know what I just realized is uh, I'm delivering and selling dope just like my dad, but in a different way, right? It is. You are. <laughs> yeah. You're doing that. Yeah. LinkedIn profile, by the way. <laughs> no, no, right? <laughs> no, I'm a dope dealer. Be authentic. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, our next show is about code switching. So, I mean, maybe I'll bring that up in the next show. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think impactfully, uh, I, I, or thematically, I should say, I think we want our listeners to leave with, you know, actionable ideas to help further their development. Mm -hmm. um, so they can enact new ways of approaching things in their own journey. So it could be their attitude, it could be their strategy, it could be the way they network. And I think we all collectively also want to help our audiences uh, differentiate themselves, uh, but also encourage them to inspire others. I think that's what we also want to do. Yeah, that's ultimately what we want to do. Just, I mean, in today's world, I mean, if you just get on social media, Facebook, you see people are just stuck in their way, stuck on their position, and they don't want to see it from somebody else's perspective. So, and that's why we're here. Cause you know, I mean, we, you're an influencer within the HR community. Javier, you're the vice president of the PA. I'm the vice president of the alumni. So we're a bit of influences within the former player, uh, not industry, but you know, fraternity of brothers or whatever so just trying to help everybody just see things from a different perspective just so they can really just it can be a better world better corporate world for everybody absolutely it's a transformational um inspiration to folks and and i use the word transformation rather than in transition simply because i yeah. think it's a, a lot more positive and and you are you are technically transforming your life uh, both personally and professionally. It could be going to another job or going to another relationship. Uh, but, um, you know, transition and transformation, I think, are interchangeable and, and hopefully people will see and, and get inspired by some of the conversations we have. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all about evolving, right? It's all about bringing yourself wherever you're at, meeting yourself wherever you are at, and being intentional about that transformation or that evolution to a higher or more progressive state, man. And especially now in today's uh, climate with this current scene that we all have access to outside our windows and through our device screens. And the world, the world is going through its own transformation, its own evolution. And so now is a time for people to look within to impact themselves so they, they can be impactful for the new world that is to come. Wherever we get there, we're going to get there. It's working itself out and it's coming. So 
Very important, very important dialogue, very important concepts that we're touching on. And hopefully it's just helpful. We have a lot of uh, things planned for our viewers and just want to be a uh, just want to be a value add. You know, we want to and we want to hear feedback from what our viewers and listeners are, are, are getting from our conversations. And we want to hear that feedback so that we can further uh, evolve and transform ourselves and this platform that we're utilizing. So those things are important as well. Real talk. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think we're all excited to, to get this uh, platform off the ground. This is a, a great start. Um, certainly, again, blessed to be part of the group and, and uh, exchanging ideas here. Um, we've got some great shows coming up with some great guests and uh, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the subsequent shows that we're going to be producing. Just so you know, every episode we want to leave the uh, listener and the viewer with something that they can use actually, um, something tangible and something that they can use uh, conceptually, right? Whether it's inspiration or whether it's motivation. So, um, especially in this environment now, right? Uh, people, men, women, um, time is now, right? Time is now to cling to each other, to look to each other for support, to look to each other and care for each other. This is what, this is what our world needs right now is a, is a whole bunch of human beings caring for each other. And here at The Dope Experience, we believe that sharing is caring. So. We want to share with you some resources, uh, one each. We'll keep it short of something that you can dive into at your leisure. Uh, who wants to Who wants to set it off for today? I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, and my bad. I almost forgot about the most important thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So a, a book I recommend that I read, and I read it in uh, at SMU in one of our programs, Dr. Barner. It, we had to read it for one of his classes and it's called the the leadership pipeline how to build leadership power companies and i wish i would have read that while i was playing football because mm -hmm. it tells you about every level from a, a a low level manager all the way up to the ceo what to expect what to look for and how to be a better leader and how to develop leaders that's why they call it the pipeline, how to develop leaders to grow within your company. So uh, I would recommend that, that anybody that's trying to grow within their company might be a hypo. My wife, she read the book and loved it. She read it to prepare for an interview and she read it while she'd been in her hypo program. And uh, she refers to it because it, like I said, it tackles every level in corporate America. So it's right. called the pipeline. The, uh, the leadership pipeline. What's the author again? Oh, I don't know the author. I was looking for the book, but I have the title. Is that Jocko? No, it's not Jocko. Okay. No, not Jocko Willett. But yeah, Dichotomy of Leadership, Extreme Ownership, and those books, those are great books as well. Awesome. I'll go second here. Uh, mine is. Um, Leading with Gratitude by Adrian Bostic and uh, a new friend of mine, Chester Elton, both authors. Chester is a, an executive leadership coach. He and I connected uh, a few months ago and he sent me a copy of his book. Uh, like Rombie's, it does impact the way people lead. It's, it literally is leading with gratitude and changing your mindset. It's effective and it's uh, applicable for high potential leaders, leaders who are currently in seat now and, and want to optimize and change the way they approach leadership um, in, in a much more gratifying way. So lots of examples in there. It's a, a, an accumulation of different studies and different interviews they've had with different companies across different verticals and corporations and industries. Uh, so leading with gratitude, Adrian Gostick and Chester Elton. Very good. Very good. And, and, and that's, uh, I think that's Ron, uh, Ram uh, Churan. Probably. Yeah, yep. Ram. Yeah, that's okay. what it is. Okay. So last but not least, uh, the book I'm going to drop for you today is called uh, Managing Transitions. And that's by William Bridges. And personally, for me, this is one that, like Rambi had alluded to, I definitely wish that I would have read this when my uh, football career as a player was coming to an end. Um, 
So he, what I like about it is that he, while he frames the the, the conversation in a uh, organizational corporate type of setting, there are tons of uh, principles and tools that the reader can use that do not have to be applied to a, a traditional organizational or, co or corporation setting. I really appreciate that. Uh, just you know, allow the book to sort of meet you wherever you're at uh, if you decide to to to, to consume it. And um, what I like about it as well is that it gives a a, a real um, tangible formula framework, breaking it down to a science, gamifying a transition. So take out all the guesswork, take out all the, the mystical information and just give you exactly what you need to get you exactly where you wanna go. So that's uh, Managing Transitions by William Bridges. William Bridges. Good, good. William Bridges. All right. I think I had I read that book in organizational change management. I'll have to go look at my syllabi, <laughs> see my syllabus, and see. Yeah. I think I read that book. I think it was. Was that? Uh, were you? You did you? Uh, did you have to read that for one of your classes at SMU? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, I, that's I'm pretty sure. sure. That's where I first learned about it. Yeah. But it's interesting. Well, you mentioned you mentioned going, you know, SMU. That's my second time going back. You know. <laughs> And it's you just 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 having going through the, the college process once uh, during the college process age and then circling back, going through it again. That is a whole another eye opening experience that, man, we can probably do a, a show about that. Right. Going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> and with that having experience. to sit in class, <laughs> <laughs> like having to sit in class with 19 and 20 year olds. Right and here, I am. Right. Uh, when I started school, I was thirty-eight. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you were a young man, and I and like me, I, I, me too, man. I'm in my late, 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 late thirties as well, man. So, I'm in my mid to uh, mid to late thirties. <laughs> That's why I like to say <laughs> mid to late. Y'all yeah. don't want to know how old I am, so we'll stay hey, Sal. So uh, you know, test is A and M. Is it a two year college? <laughs> no, I think that it's uh, <laughs> a four year degree. Okay, it's new though. Right. It's new. So, so you do not look a day over forty one. I appreciate yeah. that. It's called short hair hair color. Oh man, you kidding? You and water burger and Dunkin' Donuts. A good dosage of that that helps as well. <laughs> that yeah. was keep you young. You've been keeping up with the. Clean shave during the quarantine, as you can wow. see. This is I, I'm proud you of my quarantine. Day. Get to you guys, it would take me about eight, ten months to get something even close to that. So I, I didn't want to compete. Oh. Oh, okay. We appreciate that. Sure. No yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we're coming to an end. So to our listeners, now it's time for you to go be dope and give hope. Y'all take care. See y'all next time. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Dope Experience. Our hope is that you're left with a new perspective to formulate a blueprint of growth and transformation. Make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify or wherever you consume podcasts. Stay dope.